My name is Lauren McCurley and I work at Ibsen and I'm the Customer Service Manager. And this is my colleague Daniela and she's the LMS extraordinaire at, um, at Ibsa. But who is Ibsa? Our company is Innovation and Business Skills Australia and we do predominantly produce resources for the VET sector. Ipsa has a long history of producing market-leading, high-quality learning and assessment material. Ipsa is con uh, committed to developing excellent resources uh, that enable best practice teaching, learning and facilitate compliance. But why did we need eCreators? Well, we had a platform that was very, very old and had many issues and these are actually what we um, came to the conclusion. Our platform was six years old and needed updating. Predominantly, our VET clients had previous Moodle experience. We were limited in what we could do, especially in regards to branding and customisation of our LMS. The system was clunky and caused confusion for administrators, trainers and students who had purchased our platform. And the upgrades were very expensive. Basically, we were in a box that we couldn't get out of resulting in the need for a new platform, and thus the reason we spoke to eCreators. After many discussions with my colleague and I, we came up with the following vision as to what we needed from our new LMS. We needed a contemporary LMS with a clean interface. We needed to be able to send, um, service many clients from the one platform, and the client had to have the feeling that it was their own platform. And this we wanted to achieve through branding, additional resources, customization, and a generic portal. The platform needed also an internal communication system so that all information could stay within the one platform. Students needed to actually be able to customize their profile, work autonomously within the platform, and keep track of their results as well as self-pace their learning. And lastly, we wanted a platform that we could speak to our third-party clients but operate the content from the one platform. My colleague will now help you with the solution. So our solution was to build, uh, to bring a multi-tenancy environment into Moodle. So our previous platform was multi-tenancy but it couldn't communicate with external LMSs and most of our clients were familiar with Moodle. So eCreators helped us to bring our vision to life within a Moodle environment. So they were Moodle experts. Um, most of our clients, like Lauren said, had um, previous Moodle experience, so Moodle was already familiar to them. Um, they, were, they, came recommend, sorry, they came recommended by Moodle. Um, they were also a like, local provider, which was really good for us. Um, it meant that we could have accessibility to them whenever we needed it. So we went through a period of building the platform. So Lauren and I sat down and looked at what we needed from our, what we could bring from our old platform over to the new platform, but also um, but also what we could improve and what we could retire. Um, we also worked with a lot of our clients to make sure we were covering um, the need, their needs as well when it came to building a new platform. We went through a build phase um, that went very successfully and then we got one of our clients to pilot the system to see if they could break it after I'd already tried to break it um, in a multi-tenancy way um, and it worked very, very well for them. They could customise their, um, their portal the way that they needed to and it didn't affect anyone else's, which is something that was really, really important. So what eCreators provided us was the multi-tenancy Moodle environment as part of their um, LearnBook product. It was contemporary, so um, it looked really nice on the user's end. It was web-based, so as long as someone had a computer and internet connection and the correct login details, they could access the platform even if it was four o'clock in the morning, you know, on a remote island somewhere. Um, it could be branded. Um, it was customizable as far as they could add what they needed to, to their courses. And they also provided us with support. So the platform itself. The platform has a generic login page so that no matter which, which tenant you are or where you're from, you all go in through the same front door. So we created a very generic login page for 
everyone that uses our platform. So it's one login play page for all our clients and all of their students, even though we have multiple clients all using the one system. So when students log in, they are seamlessly and unnoticeably directed to their organization's LMS. So what I've got here is a diagram that kind of shows how the platform works. You've got a master account that overarches all of the tenants sitting below it, and it's kind of like the puppeteer that can pull the strings of all the platforms that it, it's created. So you can see here that even though you've got the same platform sitting underneath the master, they're all a little bit different from the other because all of our clients are a little bit different. And none of the two, none of them interact with each other and that's exactly what we wanted. We didn't want RTO organisation A being able to interact with organisation D. So it's one system that replicates itself as many times as required to create many private Moodle learning management systems all linked to the same central accounts. So all clients can be created, maintained, supported from a central access point in the global administrator's account. So this is what the global administrator's account looks like and it's one of the most important pages even though it looks really simple. This is where we create all of our clients um, so that we can edit them, suspend them, delete them, do whatever we need to them, but we can access them in a really simple way. We can also deploy course content to them as well from here. So it's really easy to add a new client. All you have to do is hit the add new client button and you need very little information to be able to create them. You can do it in under a minute. And what that does is that creates a new tenant under the umbrella. So clients are supplied with specific content that's shared only with them. Um, IPS is a content provider that creates resources from certificate, mainly in the VET sector, from certificate two all the way up to diploma, advanced diploma, and that's what we have housed on our LMS and that's what we can share with our clients. So all of our clients only see the content that's specific to them. Um, from there, they can add chain, uh, add or change course content which only affects their LMS clone. So each of our clients is different and we don't want them to be able to interact with each other so they only see what's in their tenancy. So when we create one, one of our clients, this is what it looks like. It looks fairly simple. Um, all we need to do, we've already created the course content and put that into a shell so we deploy the content via this page. We just have to type in the title the unit code um, or something identifiable or tagged in the course that allows us to, to give it to our clients. We also then need to name, name the client, what's that tenant going to be called, and then use a primary contact, inf primary contact information, which is the first name, surname and email address of the person who's going to be administrating the platform. They can then choose to upload their client logo and company colours so that they can brand their, their tenancy and those brandings only, those brandings lie with them only. So this is what our course content looks like. It's all packaged into a place card and this is what our company administrators see and so do the students. So when they enter the course, they see the course content. What we also needed from the platform was that we also needed really good reporting system. So we asked eCreators to build in great report, uh, great reporting systems into the platform because not only do we want to be able to run lots of different reports on our clients, so uh, so do our clients. So the comp the global administrator can run reports on individual users, individual companies, or all companies simultaneously. So now the client account, what does the client see? Once they've been set up, they get sent an email and they can log into their platform. You'll notice that in the logged in user box or the um, home box, there's a groups management. So that's where all of our clients can administer their, their groups. Um, they're able to see all of their purchase courses, so whatever whatever course they've had to, whatever courses they've had deployed to them, that's what they'll see. Um, they can then go and add all their users from here, 
create meaningful user groups. They can edit their client information, so that's where they can change their company branding, and they can also change their company colors as well. And these are only, these changes are isolated to those companies. So individual clients can brand, customize courses, create and enroll students, communicate with students. So there's a messaging system that they can use within their clone that communicates with their students. So trainers can communicate with their students. Students can communicate with students. They can create customizable reports. And this is just to show um, how easy it is for a client to change their logo when they hit the edit client information box. All they need to do is use a um, JPEG or a PNG file um, and choose it from within their computer and then select their primary colors to create the color that they want to choose. Otherwise, they can select it from a color palette that pops up when you hit that box. So what does the user see? Users don't know they're part of a multi-tenancy environment. They think they're just a user in a standalone LMS, and that's what we want them to think. So when a user logs into a course, they can you can see that it's nice and easy. Everything's on the same page for them. Um, and they don't know they're part, they're part of a wider multi-tenancy network. So what we also needed the platform to do, apart from being multi-tenancy, was to share, securely share content with our third party um, clients. So they're clients who already have an established LMS but require content that we supply. So eCreators built the learning tools interoperability into our platform so that we could deploy content to these users. So this is what it looks like for our third party users. They get the content that's securely housed within our LMS and that's all they can see. So with good planning and a well-executed build, we got a great multi-tenancy learning management system. Does anyone have any questions? Awesome, we solved all your problems. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, cool. Yep. Okay. With your individual tenants, how did you manage uh, enrollment limits or the number of uh, users that they were allowed to deliver your coursework to? Um, there's no limit. Ah. We have a flexible um, cloud system that allows any amount of um, users to be on yeah. that system at, in within the multi-tenancy and the, it's flexible so it goes yeah. in and out as required depending yeah. on how many students we've got within our client space. Yeah. So do you have a, a limit on how many users they're supposed to have? No, no. Mm. there is no limit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nor is their content limited at this stage. Um, did any of your um, tenants uh, require or request any plugins to be put into their site? And if so, did you, how, did, how did that affect other tenants? Um, if there was a plugin requested, it had to be site-wise. So we had to make a decision on our end whether it was something that we were going to implement to be site-wide or whether it was something that we were going to decline them because it's not something that we um, could house all of it, we could use for all of our um, tenants. Okay. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, have you ever had a client who would want to integrate your instance of Moodle with another system that they have, perhaps an Active Directory, uh, in terms of single sign-on or trusted token? We have had people ask if it would interact, if they could use the Vetrag plugin or other student management plugins, but at this stage it's not possible because of the way that the multi-tenancy um, is set up. Tim. Tim's the person that built the behind the scenes, so I don't know if you've got a different answer. Yeah, Daniela's uh, answer is quite accurate. Uh, plugins are site-wide, so if we do support plugins, we will need to adjust them to support multi-tenancy. 
So it, it, yeah, it increased the effort of development for each plugin. Um, just a question regarding uh, once your client receives your call, their calls content, can they edit that at all? So if they've got like a video from their CEO or a message, can they edit that course once it's in there? Yep. So what happens is we package our um, we package our um, content into a shell. So one of those placeholders is a what we call a unit. Um, it goes into a read-only format in our course catalog, and then what the client does is migrates it over into their um, local environment and that means they can then edit that course so they can add those video links, they can add the um, assessment tools and all of those standard Moodle things that they need that won't affect another client. And um, just to follow up, so if there's a change in let's say um, like a vet competency code or something, yeah. how do you push out those updates to existing courses? where they've already got students enrolled, perhaps halfway through activities or cycles. How does that work? Um, if, it's a, if it's a change to our SCORM content, um, we use the manifest file. So if we change the manifest file, it um, updates downstream. But if it was anything other than that, um, it's something that we have to do manually at this point. And if it's the client, like all our clients are account managed, so if there was an update in a um, unit, then the account managers would contact their clients. Generally, there's a 12-month teach-out period and they would talk about if we needed new school and they would run the students out through that. Great, thanks. How did you handle um, the messaging tool? Do, does your multi-tenancy support messaging and isolating uh, users from different tenants using messaging? It does. Um, so the messaging systems contained within each um, tenancy. So if you're message, if you're in company A, you can only see people enrolled in courses in company A and message only those those people. But um, um Tim, did you build that part as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the messaging is localized to the course context. Basically, the only thing that is overarching is what we can see with yep. each client. No client can see anything else except within their cohort. So we have the system where both of us can see everything in regards to all the clients on our system, but the clients can see nothing between each other. So it's like they've purchased each one, they've purchased an individual yep. LMS system. We're the only ones that can see everything. Yep. Because uh, because it is highly customized solution, so in that case, the admin on a uh, tenant level, what type of rights do they have? Those admins have uh, on the system, on their tenancy. So the admin rights that they've got are to be able to customize their courses. They're able to create their students and edit their students. Um, they're able to edit the welcome user email. Um, so they're able to do everything that they should be able to within the LMS um, as if it was standalone. And the trainers also have everything that Moodle currently has in a normal Moodle system. So they get to create courses, they get to edit the courses, they can update their assessments and everything as well. Any more? We've only had it up and running for a very short time, so basically we've pretty much transferred what we've got across. So, so we've got about 15 on it at the moment. 15. Yeah. yeah. They can have as many users as they want. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Yeah. It has, currently hasn't fallen over, so I'll let you know when we get to 20,000. <laughs> but yeah, at this point in time, it hasn't fallen over and we've had no issues. Any more questions? Um, just regarding the login page, so you said that there was a single login page for all of your tenants. Is that, I'm assuming that's a design requirement as opposed to like maybe company policy? Like I'm just thinking the tenants we've got or the customers that we service, they always want everything branded from end to end. So I just found it surprising that you went with that particular layout. We wanted the one portal, like at the end of the day, it was one of the things yep. probably left over from the old system we had that the only thing is that we made this more generic, that it basically was just a very generic front door. Um, and basically when they stepped through that front door, they were in then their 
the RTO purchased branded section. Um, yes, clients do want everything from start to finish. Yep. Um, however, if they want that, then they'd probably go build their own LMS. Yep. And that's, that's the thing. So at the end of the day, that's the decision you have to make as a company. Do I invest or do I have someone who already has all the content and has all the system and has the support and I rent? And so that's a, that's a decision you'd make as a company. And generally, um, a lot of our clients who are using our platform don't have the budget um, or the time or the technological know-how to be able to ask someone to create an LMS for them. That's why they're using our content on our platform. Great. Thank you very much. No worries. Thank, Thank you. you.